Jesus. We are thankful and we bless his holy name. So those of you that are here, come on, stand to your feet. Are you ready? Let's just give God a shout of praise. Let's give God a shout of praise. Hold on for your faithfulness. We are grateful. Hallelujah. For your faithfulness, we are grateful. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yes, We bless and exalt you today. You're worthy of all the glory. You're worthy of all the praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. For about 10 seconds, can we just give God a thanksgiving? Hallelujah. For about 10 seconds, can we give him the fruit of our lips? For about 10 seconds, you've got about five more. Just the fruit of your lips. You're wonderful, Lord. You're excellent. Nobody like you. 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 N
for it's the Lord thy God who has crossed us over into June and he has launched us out into a new series. For this is the Lord that in us generosity for this is the DNA of our God for this is the same God that looked upon us from the dust of the field and breathed his Ruach into us and he has made us a living soul for this is the same God that looked upon us in our most dirtiest state and he called us good for this is the same God that lifted us up and told us to take dominion in the earth for this is the same God that crossed us over into a new season of life but this is the same God that we come to worship in spirit and in truth in the beauty of his holiness but this is the same God that taught us to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and that he will add all things unto us but we don't have to take no thoughts for the things for this day for this day has already been taken care of but this is the same God that caused the rain to be released upon our field to release us into a season but this is the same God that teaches us how to be generous but this is the same God that woke us up this morning clothed in our right mind to give us the strength and activity of our limbs but this is the same God that's so generous that causes us to have brand new mercies every single day but this is the same God that forgives us of all of our sins and remembers it no more as far as the east is from the west this is the same God that anoints our hair with fresh oil to lift every burden and destroys every yoke over our life. This is the same God that watched over us as we slumbered and slept last night. And he didn't allow the enemy to come in to steal, kill, nor destroy this abundant life that he has promised us. This is the same God that says the thoughts that I have towards you, the plans that I have towards you, they are good and not of evil to give you an expected end to give you a future to give you a hope to cause you to prosper this is the God that we lift up this morning that we choose to worship that we choose to bow down this God has come to speak to us this God has come to blow a fresh wind this God has come to release a fire this God has come to prophesy this God has come to work miracles, signs, and wonders. This God has come to launch us into the deep, knowing that the deep calling up to the deep. This God has come to expand us, to increase us, to remind us. This God gives us wisdom and instruction on how to be generous. This God has come to look upon the seas of our field. This God has opened up his boat and caused the rain to pour down this God has made us a head and not the tail this God has made us the lenders and not the borrowers this God has come to release the thousand fold upon our life this God has come to give us revelation and illumination of his words this God has come to break the authority of this ministry this God has come to release us into our wealthy place this God is teaching us how to build with accuracy this God is teaching us how to build with a strategy this God is breaking up the battleground this God is breaking us out a small place this God is threatening us to build wisely in the moment God breathe upon rivers. God, let the river flow. God, let revelation flow. God, let healing flow. God, let deliverance flow. God, let the prophets, let the instruments prophesy. God, awaken the intercessors. God, awaken the apostles. God, awaken the prophets. God, awaken the evangelists. God, awaken the prophets, the pastors, the teachers. Let it be an awakening moment in the name of Jesus. We give you glory. We give you honor for breakthrough. We give you honor for breakthrough. We give you honor 
up a breakthrough. Let fear be broken. Let intimidation be broken. In the mighty name of Jesus, let courage be released. Let boldness be released. Let power be released. Let the authority be released. Anointing. It's the anointing that lifts birds and destroys yokes. No more fear. No more fear. No more fear. Breakthrough. Breakthrough. No more fear. I declare hope in the building. The hope the bird makes the heart sick. But today we have hope and we shall see the dream. We shall see the vision be fulfilled. In the name of Jesus, we prophesy. We prophesy. Not many days henceforth. Suddenly, there's a shift. There's a turnaround. Right now. Right now. We prophesy. We prophesy. There's a shift. There's a breakthrough. There's a turning around. Right now. Right now, without delay, without delay, without delay, without delay, shift, shift, breakthrough, breakthrough, shift reverse, shift reverse, shift reverse, breakthrough, breakthrough, shift reverse, shift reverse, shift reverse. Breakthrough! 
you know your story. Come on, let him hear the fruit of your lips. I know he hears your heart, but let him, come on, raise the volume on your worship. Come on, raise the volume on your worship. Come on, just press in a little further. You know your story. You know your story. You know your story. the inside of me. May you delight on the inside, on the inside of me. Cause all
worship, a shift in your praise, a shift in your sacrifice, a shift in your obedience, a shift in your belief, a shift in your trust. For God is doing a new thing at Rivers of Living Water. Don't you want to be a part of this new thing? Don't you want to be a part of the generosity of God? Don't you want to be a part of what God is doing in this place? We are in a season of building. We are in a season of generosity where my giving is bringing forth increase in my life. Don't you want to be a part of something grand of what the Lord is doing in this place? So I say unto your church to lift up your voices and praise, to lift up your voices and worship and begin to pray unto the Lord. For today you are going to be set free. Captives are going to be set free once you are incarcerated in your mind about poverty, about giving, about generosity. But the Lord has come to break the chains of your mind, to break the chains of your heart, to break the chains of you, and to liberate you so you can receive more of God, more of his blessing, more of the breakthrough, more of his generosity, more of his kindness, and more of the grace of God. I adore you, church, to listen to the word of the Lord today, because you shall be changed and trained by the renewing of your mind because God is speaking to rivers and God is calling you higher. God is calling you deeper and to a new place in him. No longer the status quo because we're going to destroy every sacred cow and we're going to raise you up today to be a voice of truth and a voice of triumph in this place, says the Spirit of the Lord. Now give the Lord a shout of praise. you felt a fire in this house that there's something burning deep on the inside of you you know there's no longer a sense of complacency at rivers because we want something different that means you gotta do something different you want something new that means you gotta do something new the old things have been passed away and we gotta get with the program of God and begin to move in a new direction in God we can't expect the same thing to keep happening and, be, and, and doing the same thing but, but, but cannot receive from God. One of the things that the pandemic has taught me is to get into a new level of trust and obedience in God. One thing the pandemic has shown me is that my relationship with God can withstand everything that's all around me. My relationship with God has kept me. And I'm pretty sure that your relationship with God has kept you. Amen. So I'm grateful for the series that we're on today. The generosity of God. Because God knows that I have been in a place of receiving generosity from God. Once where there's a season of lack, there comes a season of generosity. Once there's been a season of poverty, there comes a season of overflow. I believe it, church. See, I'm, I'm here before you today not to get you to give, not to tell you that God said pay your tithe because that's between you and him, not to tell you to sow a seed because you can give if you want to give, and not to tell you to come stand in line for a prophetic word so you can be blessed. I come here today to demonstrate the power of giving to demonstrate the power of faith, to demonstrate the manifestation of the promise of God when you trust in him, when you yield to his guidance, when you obey his word and take him at his word. That's my assignment today. I'm not going to pump you up. All I'm going to do is tell you my story, my testimony, the word of God in my life. Because for so many of us, we read the scripture, but it doesn't come alive in us. It becomes alive when you experience the things that God said you can experience. This word has become alive to me. There have been seasons in my life that not too many know about where I was walking in drought and dryness and aridness. But the Lord, 
The prophet said that God is raining, but God's rain showered me with blessings. And I'm going to tell you this story because the title of my sermon today is The Multiplier Effect. Because God is a God that multiplies. The multiplier effect. Not adding to, but multiplying. That means exponential growth. Our foundational scripture today is from Proverbs chapter 11, verses 24 and 25. And I'm going to read it to you from the New Living Translation. And it says, give freely and become more wealthy. Be stingy and lose everything. The generous will prosper and those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. Listen to that again. Give freely and become wealthy. Be stingy and lose everything. The generous will prosper and those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. Now last week, Apostle Garner laid a foundation for us coming from John chapter 3, verses, uh, verse 16, in which he said that God's dimension of love is what calls him to be a giver unto us. And as a part of our anatomical makeup, that we should desire to give as God gives. Generosity is a quality that we should ascribe to, and we are to become happy and hilarious and cheerful givers. How many cheerful givers in the house? How many generous givers in the house? You see, I, you know, I've been around the church folks, saints, a long time to know that talking about money is not a pleasant topic. I mean, we can shuck and jive and talk about the blessings of falling and that, that we're going to be rich and we're going to be wealthy. And we, we can laugh and jump up and down and sing songs of hallelujah, bless me, Lord. Give me a house. Give me a new car. But did you not know that comes some work with that? So I've been around the saints to know I can't talk about money for too long. So I'm not going to talk about your money. I'm going to talk about God's money. How about that? All right? I'm going to talk about that. Because as I said before, my own testimony is being without and God blessing. And I'm like, God, how did you do that? Through my giving. Through my giving. It was like I was the woman with the, with the mic that gave from my heart to give everything that I have because I knew what the word says, that God loves a happy and hilarious and a cheerful giver. So I was glad to give up my little because knowing in the end, God will reward me with much. See, I'm not talking about your money. I'm talking about God's money. You understand? Because he said that if I give freely, that the wealthier I will become. So eventually when God began to multiply those two mites to six mites to 12 mites, to a hundred mice, to a thousand mice. It wasn't because I was just uh, um, running up and down, standing in a line. It's because my heart posture towards God was, I believe you, I believe what the word says, and I know you as a multiplier. See, I'm talking about God's money. <laughs> I'm talking about that God loves to give, and he loves to see that quality in his children. He loves to see you just like him. We can pray, we can prophesy, we can dance, we can shout, but can you give? Can you give? <laughs> because that's a quality that the church doesn't like to talk about. That's a quality that God expects his children to have. Yeah, we're going to talk about it today. <laughs> because you know why? I want you to be free. I want you to be free when it comes time to give. Not based on what uh, um, I'm saying, but based on what God is showing you. Okay? Because all, again, I have my story. I have my testimony. I learned to call on God as my provider, the El Shaddai, the all-sufficient one. I learned to call on God as I am that I am because God, I remember crying to God, God, I'm asking you for bread, but I feel like I'm getting stoned. Where is my bread? And God says that I am your supplier. I am your source and I have every resource that you need. But see, I learned to walk in this 
God's word, not just read about it, not just talk about it, not just hear a sermon about it, but I put the word in action through my giving. Okay, God, you, says, you say to give. Let me give. Let me give. Let me, show, let me know that you are the God of my supply. Let me know that you are the God who will sustain me. Let me know that if I cast all my cares upon you, that you will keep me. I need to know that. I've been hearing it for years. I've been hearing about uh, 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 tithing will rebuke the devourer for my sake. And I'm not saying that it is not true because it has been true for me. I've been hearing about it, but there came a season in my life that I had to live it. I had to do it. <laughs> I had to walk in it. I really had to believe in it. I really had to trust in it. See, what you know, you will be tested on. So when it comes to being a, a, a generous person, you're going to be tested. Okay? I'm excited about this because giving is a part of my life. I always tell God, oh, I love to give. I love to bless people. And I don't know... <laughs> Where that, that, where that originate from with me? Because sometimes it feels like, oh, my family just getting on my nerves. Every time you look around, they calling me for this. They need that. I, can you cash out me here? Can you pay this for me? And I started complaining. But a friend of mine says, who would you rather be? The lender or the borrower? Who would you rather be? The giver or the recipient? Who would you rather be? The one who's able to give? are the one who always need to receive. And it kept changing my perspective of every time they asked me for something. But now I started doing things in a little moderation like God. Come on now. And I set some boundaries. I set some limitations. Because after all, the Bible says, if a man don't work, he shall not eat. And I tell my, my knucklehead brothers, y'all got to get up and do something. That's what the word says, but it's within limits. But then I start changing my perspective because the word of God says that he'll always give seed to whom? So if I'm continuously sowing and I'm freely giving, there's an expectation that I shall receive an abundant supply. Because why? God is the multiplier. One of the things that um, Jeremy in 2 Corinthians verse 8 and 9 and again, I love the uh, New Living Translation. It says, you know the generous grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that his poverty, that, that by his poverty might become rich. Rich in what? What we become rich in? Money? Possessions? I don't know. What about liberality? What about becoming rich in generosity? The Holman Bible Dictionary defines liberality as generosity and open-handedness. Means that my hand is open to give, right? So if I close my hand, what am I giving? Nothing. What am I receiving? Nothing. But an open-handedness means that I'm freely releasing what is in my possession. So he, was, he became rich. I mean, poor, so that we can become rich like him in our liberality, in our generosity, in our kindness, in our giving unto the Lord and to other people. It ain't all about just how much money you have. It's about what you do with it to please God. It's not about how many possessions you, get, you have, but what do you have that pleases the Lord? So you mean to tell me, right, that Jesus gave up everything like that so that I can become a generous person. He went through all of that so I can become like him. The Bible says that God, in his divine power, he gave unto us everything that we need for this life and godliness. What kind of life is that? It's that Zoe life. It's that abundant life. It is that spiritual life. The same life that Jesus declared in John 10.10 10, that I come to give you life and life what? More abundantly. So you got the power on the inside of you. We know the scripture. You got the power to get wealth. 
that he's given you that dunamis power, his strength, his might, his force to accomplish all that God has said for you to do. But the thing is, what are you doing with it? What are you doing with it? Again, I'm not talking about your money. I'm talking about God's money, God's economy, how he supplies seed to the sower, how he's the recompense, how he brings recompense to your life, how he causes doors to open unto you when you walk in obedience. Because when you read the uh, foundational verse, if I give freely, I'm going to become more wealthy. That just don't make sense. If I'm giving everything away, and wealth by definition is, is what the abundance of possession or cash or valuable assets by definition is that. So I'm, if I'm giving that all away, then how am I going to receive more? Sometimes we just don't understand it, do we? I don't understand it. I'm not trying to say that I under, understand it. I'm just going to believe God. Because it takes the foolishness of this world, right? To confound them that are wise. So God keep confining me in my own mind because sometimes I think I'm too smart for my own good. So I need God, you to show me your way so I can get away from this intellectual and reasoning and logic because it just don't make no sense to me that if I give everything away, you're going to give me more. It don't have to make sense to me no more. I swear to God, it doesn't. It doesn't have to make sense to me anymore because I've been living this principle for a while now. See, uh, uh, when I first joined Rivers, y'all, I had nothing, nothing. I lost everything. I was driving Uber in a Mercedes to make ends meet. I couldn't even get a link card. Can you believe it? They told me, uh, you, you got too much. I couldn't get nothing. I pulled up in a pantry in my Mercedes, y'all, and told them to put the food in the trunk. I had nothing. All of those possessions I had, my purses, my designer bags, and even some of the clothes, I sold it, y'all, because I had nothing. God told me to give it away, sell it, release your possession, divorce yourself from all of this stuff. When, when you do, I'm going to give you more. And somebody at the church said, you look like you ain't never been broke. I grew up broke. <laughs> I grew up poor. I grew up disgusted with nothing. And when I came here, I had nothing but a belief and a prayer and trust in the word of God. And I struggled and I suffered. But God kept me. And every time I came to church, I was purposed to give. I was purposed to give because I believe in the generosity and the kindness of God. And so I became happy that I had a few pennies to give and I gave it. Sometimes it was hard to write a $10 check. tell you the truth mama <laughs> it was hard for a sister <laughs> then I had to write a hundred dollar check you can't thank you Jesus you don't went from 10 to a hundred then being able to write a a thousand dollar check oh Lord Jesus thank you God <laughs> then a ten thousand dollar check God thank you I'm waiting on a hundred thousand <laughs> I'm waiting on the million but because even in my poverty, I purpose to be generous in my giving. Even in my season of lack, I purpose to bring something into the house of the Lord. Not because the pastor told me to, not because the prophet told me to, because I have a relationship with God that I wanted to honor him with all of my substance. And I don't care what it was, five, ten, whatever. I gladly gave. And in the midst of all of that, God began to restore. God began to give. He said, keep giving. And as I'm trying to build this business, I tell this story all the time to people because, again, you're giving. Now, not only does God cause us to give money, but he gives, you know, your treasure. He tells you to give her your time and your talent. And I had a, a business partner who called me and said, hey, I need you to help us with this grant. 
and they were meeting downtown every week. Y'all know I live out in the, in the brook, in the Bowling Brook, and that's a drive. Parking was $50. Every time we had a meet, I'm shaking because <laughs> I got to put gas in the car. I got to pay for parking. I'm checking which credit card got enough money on there for me to get there so I wouldn't be embarrassed. And on top of that, they asked me to help without payment. And I'm saying, God, like I'm looking for a contract, not for me to give some charitable work. The Lord said, do it anyway. I'm shaking every time I go down there, but I got a smile in my face looking like a million bucks. I'm all prepared like these people about to pay me a million dollars. But through that, through that obedience to God and giving of my time and my talent in the little treasure I had, that, that man called me back. He said, hey, I need you to write a grant for me. And out of that, that opened me up to receive the largest award my company has ever given. And from that moment on, I have been in a season of overflow. From that, uh, that stage of obedience up until now, God has opened the windows, okay? God has caused people to give unto me. People keep calling me. I get to the point, oh, God, I have to be careful of what I say, but it's like it's too much, God. I can't handle all this, God. It's so many people that want something from me, God. Help me to sustain this because I don't have the capacity, that's overflow. But I'm like, God, you got to send people my way so I can keep the, 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 the oil flowing, right? You know the story where the prophet told the woman to go get these uh, vessels and let the oil in and it never ran out, right? So I don't want to run out like that. Give me something to keep storing this up. Give me something to keep storing up the blessings of God. I pray for this, y'all. I fasted for this season, y'all. I fasted for the generosity of God to flow in my life. So I'm not going to curse what God is blessing. I mean, God would do it for you. I don't know what you believe in God for, but I do know one thing. If you, if you set a, 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 a season where I'm just going to trust God in this giving, I'm going to put God back in remembrance of his word. Now, I, t I think I told you guys to go where? <laughs> Look, I'm, I'm, when, when, you t when I talk about the generosity of God, I'm sorry. If I start to break down and cry up in here, y'all just excuse me. <laughs> Because you, you know, what they always say, if you don't know my story, you can't share my glory. If you don't even know that I've been through the fire and been purged, but I didn't get burned because God was on my side. Because if you don't know how God has been generous to me, I'm sorry, but, but church, I got to get it out. I got to tell of the goodness of Jesus Christ. I got to tell of the kindness and the generosity of my Lord. Because after all, he became poor so that I I may be rich in liberality and generosity and in my giving. Yeah, so I'm going to tell it. So back to 2 Corinthians chapter 8, we're going to start at verse 1. Because we know that the church of Corinth, they were some spiritual folks, right? They was full of the spiritual gifts. And it says, and now brothers and sisters, we want you to know about the grace that God has given the Macedonian churches. In the midst of a very severe trial, hmm, in the midst of a very severe inflation, high gas prices, food shortages, high unemployment. So in the midst of this severe trial, the Bible says their overflowing joy in their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. So you mean to tell me they experienced in all these economic conditions, but they still had joy? They still had overflowing joy? And they still had the desire to give unto the Lord's house? You mean to tell me that people can be going through such a such debt and poverty and not having enough, but still have the joy and the happiness and the gladness to be able to give unto God to continue the work of the ministry? 
How does that work, y'all? <laughs> How does that work? That's an internal thing, right? That's knowing your God. That's knowing your creator. For Paul continues to say, for I testify that they gave as much as they were able and even beyond their ability. We know what God says. I can do exceedingly more than you can ask or think. That's beyond what I'm able to conceive in my mind that God can do for you and he can do for me. Entirely on their own, they urgently pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing in this service to the Lord's people. And they exceeded our expectations. They gave themselves, first of all, to the Lord, and then by the will of God, also to us. So we urged Titus, just as he, just as he had earlier made a beginning, to bring also to completion this act of grace on your part. Notice how Paul is interchanging grace, right? Grace, gift, charisma. He's exchanging grace with giving generosity it's a gift but since you excel in everything remember Corinth is a church of the, all the spiritual gifts here go Paul with his argument since you excel in that you know since you excel in prophesying speaking in tongues and interpretation of tongues casting out demons raising the sick and the dead and healing the lepers since you excel in all of that rivers why don't you excel in this part That's his argument to the church. You got all these gifts that you excel in your great oratories. You got all kinds of knowledge. You got the knowledge of God, the knowledge of the spiritual gifts. You're anointed. But you're not excelling in this. The generosity of God. Excel in giving. So he's urging the church. Don't just excel in this part of your spiritual life because giving is a part of our spiritual DNA. We learned that last week, right? We're of God. We are the seed of the incorruptible, right? We learned that last week. So if, if, if I can have all the gifts and I can prophesy, give you word of knowledge, I can do all these things, but why not excel? In this grace of giving. But like Paul, I'm not commanding you, but I want to test the sincerity of your love by comparing it with the earnestness of others. In other words, as we learn, God loves, so he gave. <laughs> so you love, do you give? Are you loving? Well, then are you giving? So he's encouraging the church. Here you are, with, with, he, and he's talking about a church like Corinth that's rich and contrasting it with a church that is poor but is giving more, who's more sincere, who's overflowing with the joy and the love of God because they want to be a part of something grand, right? They want to be a part of the move of God. They want to show forth God's kindness and generosity in this season, you know. I'm not talking, I, I, y'all know we got a, a field and fund campaign. You know we've been asked to give. Right? Well, we, we ain't going to get quiet now. <laughs> we've been asked to give. <laughs> so the thing is, like, here's, here's what I do with God. I, and, you know, because I have goals. I'll set a goal. God, I want to be able to give this amount. Knowing I don't have it. But I go to God and say, God, I want to be able to give this for the furtherance of the kingdom, for the building fund, for whatever we need in the ministry. I want to be able to give this. And I leave it in God's hand. Because you know what? He brings things my way. That now, when it comes to me, I've made a dedication to what I'm going to give God's house. And then God's give me the, God gives me the ability to receive it in order to give it. That's what I do with God. Not because, you know, we say you want to be seen or heard. And all. No, this is my relationship with God about what I purpose to do in the house of God as it relates to my generosity. I said, God, I want to be able to do this. You know, in our prayers, and it, it, I, when I was thinking about it, it kind of tickles me because we always pray for God to send somebody with the wealth, send somebody with the resources. Why can't it be me? Why can't it be you? Why can't you write the million?
million dollar check. Why it has to be somebody from the outside with the millions when the millionaire should be in the house? That is beginning to tickle me because we have said those prayers for years and knowing in my heart of hearts that God, I want to be able to write the check. You're going to write the check. I'm not praying for other people to come to do what God can cause me to do. So I purpose like, I, I, I'm like, no, God, I want to be able to do that. That means if I'm sowing, that means I'm reaping. That means God is giving me seed. What is it that we don't understand about that? See, I believe in God's generosity. I believe in that, in, that, in, that, in that verse that if I give freely, he's going to give me more. So if I keep believing God, hmm, it's about a $3 million project, God. Mm -hmm. We said we're doing it debt free, God. And I know we got some happy praying folks on the line. <laughs> but I'm praying, God, let me be the one that can write a million dollars to the building fund. <laughs> right? We got a lot of people praying, sweating out the perms and, and, and the wigs and everything else. But God, let be the one that's going to write the check. See, yeah, that's for the house. That means change your mindset. I don't need other people to do what God has given me the ability to do. If God is no respect of a person, why can't he make you the person that can bring in the resources? Why can't he make you the person that can write the check? Right? So <laughs> I mean, that's just my take on it. I don't know about anybody else, but sometimes I can be a little unorthodox when it comes to this thing because I just believe God can do the impossible. I can't even figure it out. I don't even want to know how to figure out how I'm going to become a million millionaire, but not just one million, but multiple millions, right? I don't even know how that's going to happen. I don't even know when it's going to happen, but I believe that it will happen. Why? Because I'm generous. God gives seeds to the sower. And if I keep giving my seed, he's going to keep replenishing it, right? Yeah, he's going to keep giving me everything that I need because I want that, 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 that life where you have more than enough, right? You want that life where your barns are filled with plenty. That means when the barn, that's your storage place. So where are you storing up your resources, right? Your money. We always say that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, right? And they say they have, uh, what is it, cattle on a thousand hills, right? I, I went to Alabama to visit some friends and uh, because we, he has cows. And so I went to look at his cows and he had a hill. But yeah, one hill but multiple cows. So if God got a thousand hills... <laughs> That means there are multiple cows. It's not just one cow on one hill where you just got a thousand cows. No, it's the multiplier. It's more than one grazing on the land. And I'm saying that God will multiply what you give, right? He gives seed again to the sower. So one of the things that we, in order for us to walk in this kind of life, is that we have to dig deep into why we feel about giving and money the way that we do. That's a mindset. That's what the prophet said this morning in prayer, a paradigm shift. It's your mindset. See, if I have the mindset that I can't give it because I don't have enough, you'll never have enough. Right? He said, if you're stingy, <laughs> if you're stingy, you'll lose everything. Just think about people who try to hold on to everything. They never seem to have enough. And I'm not talking about not paying your light bill to give away everything. But I'm talking about in obedience to God. Purposing to be generosity with what you have. You decided. I can't make you. Other pastors can't make you, but that's you. That's you and your relationship. But what is your mind is thinking about if I give this, oh, I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm not going to be able to go here. I'm not going to be able to get my nails done. I'm not going to be able to, to take my clothes to the dry cleaners. All these things that we think about. 
But when you decide to be generous and give, you have to leave it there. You have to leave it on the ground, right? You have to leave it in a position and, and, and thank God that you had the ability to give. So this, this is the thing about our mindset. So when we, so when we begin to, 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 to have this renewed mind, our mind begins to align with the spiritual principles. Giving is a spiritual principle. So then we need to get our, our mindset in alignment with what God says is what God says about generosity and what God says about giving. So that means you got to upgrade your spiritual life by putting on that new nature and be renewed as you learn to know God and become like him. Become like him. And that means in your kindness and your generosity. And let favor abound in your life, right? So, in, in, in understanding that, okay, I need my mind to shift and align with these spiritual principles of God, then, I, then if I'm walking in this spiritual, this new spiritual life, that means there's a spiritual dimension to who I am, right? That means that I must operate on a different level. My expectations must align to what God says that I can have. So I, I'm walking on this different spiritual dimension. I have a different mindset. So I expect different things so that whatever is happening in the earthly realm, it cannot consume me. It has no power over me. It has no influence over me. I've been seeing post after post, oh, we're in a recession, but the people in the kingdom, they're not going to be affected. How many people believe that? If you're in the kingdom, that means you, are, you should be operating in a spiritual dimension in your life where you can call those things that be not as though they are, where you can expect God's bless in your life. The blessings are running you down and overtaking you. Because again, right? You said that there's no recession. Why? Because it's not about your money. It's about God's money, God's economy. What does God's economy look like? It's in seed time and harvest. It's in sowing and reaping. It's in the, the multiplier of 30, 60, 100 fold. That's God's economy. You know, so I, I feel that one of the problems that we have being a kingdom citizen trying to talk for me. <laughs> but one of the problems I see is that a lot of times we have this knowledge but we're not applying it, church. How do you become better, in it? not better, but how do you become more discerning? How do you become, like when we do prophetic trainings and we always tell people to come on and, and prophesy, listen to the voice of the Lord and begin to speak. You got to keep speaking. You got to keep prophesying. You got to keep praying because we, we're encouraging people to put it to use, Right? They sit under all this teaching and training, so we, we, we wanted them to grow stronger in their walk with God. So they're practicing it. Practice giving. A little bit. Practice it and see, it's not going to hurt. It's not going to kill you. It's not going to do any of those. Practice it. And then watch that as you continue to, to move out in your giving and watch what God begins to do in your life. But give and let it go. Don't think about it. If God put on your heart to bless somebody, bless them and keep it moving, right? Keep it doing. I'm telling you, the principles work, guys. The principles work. They work. And I, all during the pandemic, and I'm going to share a little bit more, but all during the pandemic, God was like, mm, cash out this person. I'm like. I'm not even thinking about the individual, but God is thinking about the individual, right? So I'm like, okay, every time I sold a seed, I start getting stuff, right? I'm like, so then it became, every time God put somebody on my heart, I did it so fast. I gave so quickly. I didn't second guess it anymore because I'm like, wait a minute. God, you're doing something here. Right. And so I'm like, okay, I'm going I'm to I'm obey. At first, it took me a while to obey because I kept saying, God, is this you like, I don't know about giving. No, I don't think so. And he kept bringing it to me. And then almost every month, there was a test of my generosity. 
almost every month I was tested to sow into somebody's life. Whether they were, uh, you know, a Christian or non-Christian, I was tested. But I did it. And so in the testing of this generosity, God <laughs> gave more. And I remember being a part of a, 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 a kingdom business prayer, seven days fasting and prayer. And at the end, the Lord said, so $1,000. I'm like, okay. So I wrote, I did the PayPal, sold $1,000. Not two weeks later, I get a call. I had a $100,000 contract with somebody. I said, God, what are you telling me? You give, but you can't outgive me. You keep giving, but I'm going to still give to you. You keep sowing and watch I give you more. And that because I began to obey the command of the Lord, to, to, to te- he was testing my generosity. He was showing me that in my act of giving freely that I was going to receive more than what I gave out. And so that's, that is the message of like the multiplier effect. It's an economic term. Like they use this in government and in, in, in uh, economics, which basically means that people will have an initial investment in the economy, but, but the economy will increase in income by more than you put in. That's the same as God's economy. You put in something and you get more than what you put in. And they call that the multiplier effect. They even have a formula for it to determine how much of an increase that the economy received because of that initial spending. Y'all know when the COVID struck, everybody wanted that stimulus check. Why? So you can stimulate the economy. So everybody wants something from God. How are you stimulating God's economy? The government gave you that check so you can spend. God gives you money so you can give. He gives you generosity so you can bless others. So you don't hoard it. So you don't uh, um, uh, lay it up that that moth corrupts it, right? So believe in the generosity of God. Believe in what God is trying to get uh, to you in your life. Because it's more, it's more than enough. It's more than enough. Generosity is the kingdom way. It's a lifestyle and a mindset, right? Now, I want to give you this scripture, Luke 6, 38. We love this one, right? Give, and it shall be given unto you. But I'm going to read it to you from the Passion Translation. It says, give generously, and generous gifts will be given back to you, shaken down to make room for more. Abundant gifts will pour out upon you with such an overflowing measure that it will run over the top. The measurement of your generosity becomes the measurement of your return. So (laughs) Jesus said this right to give, but listen to this translation. Give generously. But listen, when it's shaken down, pressed down, it makes room for more, right? So when you think about uh, in in the agricultural days where they had the grain and they shook it down and they filled it up so it can overflow. And I use this, how many of you like to eat potato chips and buy bags of chips? And you think you got a full bag, right? But when you open the bag and shake it down, how much you got? See, that's not how God would do you. (laughs) This verse says that when you shake it down, it's going to make room for more and you're going to keep filling it up until it overflows. All we got is a bag of air with about 10 chips in there, right? But in God's kingdom, my bag is running over, my brim is overflowing, my cup is overflowing with new wine. Shake it and see what, see, see, see who done cheated you out your little dollar now for a bag of chips. God doesn't do us like that. He tells you keep giving. I'm going to shake it down. I'm going to press it down. I'm going to keep adding to it, keep pouring on into it, keep filling it up, and then it's going to overflow in your life. How many want that kind of blessing? 
How many want their God to make room for more for you to receive? How many want to be in that wide room, that wide place uh, where the overflow and the blessings of God are running you down and overtaking your life? Uh, how many want to be in a position where you can write the check for the church, where you can give and sow and be a blessing to your sisters and brothers, where you can buy somebody a, a month's supply of groceries? How many want to be in that position? How many people want to have enough in their bank accounts, right? Well, I'm not trembling when I'm writing this check. So that means I got to get my mind right. I got to think like God thinks. He said that I, I gave you my son and in all the things that he had, he became poor so that you can be rich, so you can be like him in generosity and giving. That's a part of your spiritual life. That's a part of your DNA. It's a part of the kingdom principles of God. Sowing and reaping will never go out of style. It will always be there. Always work. Now I got a little bit of time. Yeah, God is good. <laughs> Again, generosity is the kingdom way. It's a lifestyle. It's a mindset. It's the quality of being plentiful, a quality of being large. The liberal soul shall be made fat. I ain't talking about physical fat because I'm still trying to lose a few pounds, but I want to be fat in my generosity and fat in my resources because I'm liberal, right? Well, I've accused of but she know I like to have a good time with the word because <laughs> I always use the word to say, God, show me me. Right? Show me me in this word. <laughs> Show me how I fit in, in, in the whole scheme of these. Show me where, where, where I'm weak at. Show me what I need to work on in my life. So that season of testing came to prove to me that God is my source. And as long as I try to hold on and control and be intimidated by what's going on around me, I will always be in lack. But God broke that thing in my life. And I said to myself, God, I grew up poor. I don't want to be poor anymore. You said that you, you give good gifts. Where are my good gifts? And it was me and God. Me and God. I was glad my daughter was in school because there will be many a days. It's me and God. Well, I'm pouring out my heart to him. And he all he said, you got to trust me, sister. Oh, no, he said, but love. <laughs> you got to trust. And I'm going to read this one last scripture because I hear the beeping. 2 Corinthians 9, 6 and 11. And it says, remember this. A farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop. But the one who plants generously will get a generous crop. You must each decide in your heart how much to give. And don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure. Again, I told you, if you want to give, you give. That ain't on me. I'm just trying to show you the power of giving, right? The power of breaking off lack in your life through your generosity. For God loves a person who gives generously, cheerfully, and God will generously provide all you need. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. As the scriptures say, they share freely and give generously, generously to the poor. Their good deeds will be remembered forever. For God is the one who provides seed for the farmer and then bread to eat. In the same way, he will provide and increase your resources and then produce a great harvest of generosity in you. And yes, in you. Say in me. Produce it in me. That great harvest of generosity, produce it in me. And yes, you will be enriched in every way so that you can always be generous. So you can always be generous. So to become enriched in this kingdom, we have to practice our giving of our resources, our time, our talent, our treasure. I encourage you to find a charity that's dear to your heart. Because I had to use the pantry, I always give to the pantry. It was there for when I needed it. So I give to the pantry. So you find a charity to give. Like, God, I want to be able to give. So when I get the, the email or the, or, the, or the postcard, I always give to them. 
because they were a blessing to me when I needed it. So learn to give, church. Learn to be generous in your giving. All right, let's stand to our feet. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Hallelujah. <clears throat> Father, we just want to thank you for your word on today. Lord, we just thank you for the word, Father, having free course in this place. We thank you, God, for the enlightenment, God, that you enlighten the dark areas of our life. That, God, that you begin to expose areas in our mind where our mindset and our thinking is not in alignment with your word. Father, begin to shake up and disrupt every spirit of poverty and lack in our lives in the name of Jesus. Father, break the cycle of lack. Break the cycle of stinginess, God, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, Father, we thank you on today that we are generous givers, that God, that you have given us the ability to get wealth, and God, that there is more than enough in our storehouses. We thank you, Father, for the blessings of the Lord, that they are running us down, and that they are overtaking us in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for this shift, this mindset, that God, that you bring re re release the fire against anything that is contrary to your word, in the name of Jesus. So, Father, we thank you on today that, Lord God, that rivers, a place of blessings, a place of wealth and generosity, a place of kindness, God, a place where you're making holy millionaires, a place, God, where people are walking in the blessings of the Lord, a place, God, where we're receiving 30, 60, and 100 fold, that, God, that we're on a new level, that, Father, we won't look back to the things of old, but, God, you're doing something new in rivers. You're being you're building us, uh, you're building our minds, uh, you're building our spiritual life, uh, and you're tearing down walls, God, walls that are preventing us from receiving the fullness of you, walls that are preventing us from walking in our promises, God, and Father, we thank you today for all that you're doing. We thank you for the increase, we thank you for the favor, and we thank you for your generosity, in Jesus' name, hallelujah. Awesome word. You may be seated for a moment. Hallelujah. We thank and we honor the Lord. And to our Facebook audience, we want to give you an opportunity to sow into good ground. We have five ways in which we can give. We have text to give. And if you're out there in the Facebook audience, you can text the word give, the number two, R-O-L-W, to the number 206-859-9405. Still doing things where you send in a money order or a check, send that check to our P.O. Box. That's P.O. Box 4315, and that's in Oak Park, Illinois, 60304. Cash App is real simple dollar sign Rivers with an S H O P H O P stands for the House of Prayer. That's what we're building. You can also give via Zelle, which is give at riverschicago.com. Then we're asking that you would download our app. Our app can be found in the Google Store or you can find it in Apple Play. And if you get our app, all the information will be there for you to give. At this time, we just want to thank you for being a part of our broadcast. Tune in again at the 1030 a.m. broadcast. And so we're going to say goodbye to our Facebook audience. God bless you and you all continue to have a great day in Jesus' name. To those of you that are sitting in the listening audience, I want you to prepare your hearts to give. Our scripture is Deuteronomy 8 and 18. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swear unto his fathers, as it is this day. And even as the woman of God was teaching and preaching, we want to position ourselves so that we can be the ones that can be used by God. At this time, if you lack an envelope, we have ushers. All you have to do is raise your hand. And then we'd also like to get those buckets up here at this time also. Saul this morning, and Saul was given instruction, and upon 
son Saul being given instruction, he did not do what God told him to do, but he thought he did. And he came and he said, oh, I did everything that you told me to do, but he had the cattle and everything. They were out feeding and he had kept some of the kings when God had told him to annihilate everything. Somebody say partial obedience is not obedience. Hallelujah. Glory to God. There are certain things that go along. The Bible says give and it shall be given. So a lot of times to get to the place of it being given, you got to give. And so everybody wants the millionaire status. Everybody wants the things that come as a result. But then when it comes down to giving, sometimes there's a halt. Then there's a commandment that tells us don't be a grudging giver. Don't be a giver that's doing it out of duty. I want you to get rid of things like I got to pay my tithes. You're not paying your tithes out of duty. You're paying your tithes out of love. Say this is love money. This is love money because I love the Lord. I give every dime off of a dollar. See how minuscule that is? All God is wanting from us is every dime off of a dollar. I think about as a husband and a father, my wife and my children get more than God. Think about that. My wife and my children get more than God. I send more money to my daughter's college than I probably give as far as a tithe, every dime off of a dollar. I want you to understand that. I want you to understand that. My wife probably in a week of hair, nails, and outfits would probably do more than a dime off of every dollar that I make. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? So when we give to the Lord, that's love money. That's love money. It's not an obligation. It's not a duty. Get rid of terminology like I pay my tithes. I give or I sow my seed of tithe. Glory to God. Let's stand on our feet at this time. And you may think that that's kind of tripped out, but that's the, that's the little nuances of the command that God has given to us. And that if we can capture that and begin to obey it, we can see exponential or even as Prophet Vanessa said, we can see the multiplying effect in our finances. I was thinking to myself that um, I was somewhere and I did, a, I did a service and one of my buddies who had um, been tracking with me for a long time, he, he usually drives me around and stuff. So one time I went to this service and they gave me the uh, honorarium. And so he had the nerve to ask me what the honorarium was. Bless his heart. Hallelujah. And so I told him what the honorarium was. So it was close to $1,000. And so he was like, whoa. He's like, you only stood up there for like 40 some odd minutes. And they gave you that? And I was like, yeah. So we went somewhere else and we did something. And we were getting ready to drive off. And as we were driving off, the pastor of the church walked over to the car he said, here, man of God, get yourself some dinner or something like that. So he had the nerve to ask me again what he gave me. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so I shared with him what he gave me. But I got to thinking about that, that there are people in the church that have never had experiences like that. I got to thinking about that. There are people in the church who have never experienced someone giving into their But I'm talking about strangers. I'm talking about non-family members. I'm talking about somebody just coming up and giving into your bosom. And that should not be. That should not be. We've been in church for too long and we've been practicing these principles and we've been talking about God rebuking and devouring everything. So if there is something where you are not having a multiplier effect going on in your life, go back to the scriptures and examine them and begin to say, God, what do I need to change? What do I need to tweak? Because men are supposed to be giving into your bosom. It's not because you a pastor. It's not because you apostle. It's not because you a prophetess. It's because you a giver. That's that title, giver. And as a result of being a giver, men give into your bosom. And it works in the city, and it works in the field, it works as you come in, and it works as you go out, 
because if the blessing is upon your life, it will attract things, glory to God. Not just financial, but because we're right here talking about the monetary, it will attract things into your life. I've been the recipient of multiple cars that were given to me. Do you hear what I'm saying? Do you hear what I'm saying? Not just, not just financial things. I've been given a good family because I've sown into other families. My daughters are good daughters because I've been a surrogate to other people's children. I've given up my time. I've given up my fathering. I've given up my resources. Do you hear what I'm saying? And so these things come back. And then it's like one of the highest degrees of appreciation and compliment I get. Like, man, you got some really nice daughters. You got some good daughters. They're well-mannered. I really appreciate your daughter. My daughter's about to come on and do an interview for this lady. She then got in touch with her. and She's interviewing her. Man, that's a high compliment to me because I know I have sown into other people's children. So it's not all about finances. But because we're talking about finances, that's what we're exemplifying, you know. But as you give, it shall be given unto you a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Men will abound in blessings towards you. God will open doors for you that no man can shut. Is that all right? Let's make our confession today. This seed breaks cycles of poverty and establishes God's covenant here at Rivers. This seed creates environments that exalt Jesus Christ, educates the believer, and engages the culture. This seed creates environments for people to know Jesus Christ. Focus in on the seed. Focus in on the seed. This seed causes the manifestation of the house of prayer. I sow this seed in faith and I receive power to get wealth in Jesus' mighty name. Come on and just send up some praises right there. Hallelujah. Thank you for the seed, Lord God. Thank you for his power to multiply and to produce in Jesus' mighty name. One last thing I want to say as you get ready to come, if you're coming from all over the building, don't be afraid to be that person. Just like she said, I sold a hundred. I sold a thousand. I sold 10,000. And now she says, I want to sow a hundred thousand. See, some people are scared to be that person. Don't be afraid to be that person. Don't be afraid. I'm, I'm, I'm still in the $1,000 category. I'm trying to catch up with prophetess. Hallelujah. But I'm coming. I'm on my way because that's been my confession. I'm going to be the one that's going to drop that $10,000 check. Glory to God. And then I'm going to be the one to drop the $100,000 check. Glory to God. Then we're going to do half a meal. Then we're going to go on ahead to millionaire status. You cannot be afraid to be that guy. Don't be afraid. And don't let nobody put you in a box. I used to say that in my old church. People used to look at me funny. I was like, man, I thank God I didn't sold, I didn't sold tens of thousands of dollars, but I've never sold 10,000 at one time. And so because I've sold the thousands, I want to move up. I want to go to the next level. Glory to God. What you talking about? You want to sow 10,000, something wrong with you? You don't understand the power of the giver. You don't understand the power of the giver. You can come at this time. You can come at this time. I feel like the drummer was rushing me today. <laughs> it's the power of sowing. It's the power of your seed. It's the power of sowing. Oh, y'all ain't ready. Hallelujah. I know what it means to be blessed. When you start telling people about your blessings, they think that you're proud. And they think that you're bragging and things like that. But I love my wife, man. And I remember, bring it down just a little for me, Judy. I, I feel like you're pressuring me, man. I really love my wife, man. And when I was in 10 years of marriage, I told my wife, I said, man, I want to do something real special. And my wife always loved the um, islands and different things like that. I said, man, we need to go to Tahiti for our 10-year anniversary. 
And so I was like, you know what? And I just don't want to go and hang out. I just want to go and I just want to be taken care of. And I find the best way to be taken care of on vacation is to go on a cruise because they'll take care of you. Hallelujah. And so for our 10-year anniversary, we cruised Tahiti, went to Bora Bora, and I didn't forget some of the names of the place because we coming up on 31 years. That's how I can forget. It's been past the 20, the 10-year mark for a long time. But God made those things possible, people of God. He made those things possible. And at, 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 stand to your feet. We're about to dismiss. If you got communion, you can take it later. I go to my job, and I worked in, the, in a section of my job that's called product support. And we had people that were like the software engineers, and I would go on more vacations to them. And they would always ask me, they were, Rob, how do you get to go on all these vacations working in the department that you work in? And it was testimonial time. My income is my seed. Gosh, <laughs> you got that pie. <laughs> my income is my seed. I'm sitting in a house right now that I was given $34,000 to get into. I looked up my house on Credit Karma. I got more equity in my, mm, because my income is my seed. See, y'all hear what I'm saying? See, we're looking at things oddly, man. One seed produces an apple tree with many apples with multiple seeds. We concern about releasing the seed when one seed can produce a tree with multiple. It's the multiplier effect. Father, in the name of Jesus, let the word that the woman of God has spoken, let it resonate in the hearts of your people. And Lord God, don't let it be like times gone past where we hear a great message on money and we get excited and we just have endurance for a season. And then when gas goes up to $6, we retract. We don't give anymore. But may we take our eyes off of the economy and look to the bigness of our God. May we take our eyes off of presidents, Lord God, and look to the bigness of our God. May we take our eyes off of political situations and things that's going on in this world and begin to recognize that this is not our king. Our kingdom operates on different principles. Our kingdom operates on different foundations and substratums. And may we tap into, Lord God, that that you give to us and become those that you desire for us to be. It's in the matchless, awesome, unrivaled name of the Lord Jesus Christ that we believe we receive. It's in Jesus' name. Come on and tell somebody you love them. You are dismissed. Hallelujah. We'll see you at the 1030 service.
you ask that you all just simply look over to your seat.